Hi, I'm Aditya Patapa. I'm from Virginia Tech. And my talk today is titled, How to Build Regulatory Networks from Single Cell Gene Expression Data. One of the fundamental questions in biology is, how are the many different cell types in the body generated during embryonic development from a fertilized egg, which is only a single cell? Here, the embryonic stem cell undergoes a series of cell divisions and gives rise to different cell types, such as neurons, skin cells, and so on. This process in which a cell changes from one cell type to another is known as cellular differentiation. And the cell differentiation doesn't just occur during the embryonic development, but also in adulthood, as adult stem cells divide and create fully differentiated daughter cells during tissue repair and during normal cell turnover. For example, hemorrhagic stem cells give rise to different types of blood cells. Here, you're looking at an image where from a single hematopoietic stem cell, we can obtain all mature blood cells through a hierarchical series of lineage decisions. Conceptually, we can think of cells in different states as the ones expressing different sets of genes. And as cells move between states, they undergo a process of transcriptional reconfiguration where transcription factors silence genes or activate new genes. And this can be captured in what we call a gene regulatory network or a GRN. The nodes in this network are genes or transcription factors, and the edges are between transcription factors and the genes they regulate. The authors of this paper from which I've taken this figure built the network by carefully studying the literature. But the question we are interested in is how do we build such a network using computational methods? Since they're transcriptional networks, in principle, we could use gene expression data to construct them. However, cells in transient states are often hard to characterize because it is difficult to experimentally purify cells in intermediate states. But latest developments in single cell experiments can enable us to characterize all these states without the need for purification. We can then think of one single cell RNA-seq experiment to constitute a time series with each cell representing a distinct time point along a continuum. Because it is going to contain cells in many different states, by studying the diversity in the regulatory programs, it may be possible to reverse engineer GRNs from SCRNA-seq data. Not surprisingly, already over a dozen methods have been developed for GRN inference from SCRNA-seq data in just the last five years. Here, I'm presenting 12 methods that we have studied in detail. Of course, uh, many more have been developed since then. Let me summarize the key properties of these methods. As you can see, they use a variety of different techniques to infer GRNs. Many of them rely on association-based measures such as correlation or mutual information or their variance. Some of them even build Boolean or ODE models. The inputs to these methods may also vary. Of the 12 methods I'm showing you here, it is doesn't require time-ordered cells as input. Even the output for these methods differ in key aspects. 10 of these methods could output directed edges from transcription factors to genes as we may desire. And a small fraction also inform sign of the edge corresponding to activation or inhibition. But how good are these methods for GRN inference from single cell data? Here's a typical performance evaluation reported in one of the papers. The table shows the area under the receiver operating characteristic curve, or AUROC, and most values are close to 0.5, which is the AUC of a random predictor. Most of these evaluations vary from paper to paper, with each paper using a different data set and ground truth network and claiming that their method is the best. So before we set up to develop our own GRN inference method for single cell data, we wanted to first evaluate how good these methods are in a uniform framework. However, we face several challenges in our effort for evaluating them. First, we need a ground root network to evaluate the accuracy of the inferred network. But the ground root networks underlying experimental SCRNA data are usually unknown. 
So people typically evaluate their methods on simulated data, but there's no widely accepted strategy for simulating SERNA-seq data from a given network. So to overcome the first challenge of lack of ground truth networks, our main idea was to use Boolean models of cellular differentiation curated from the literature. To overcome the lack of tools for simulating SERNAC data from a given network, we developed BooloD, which, as the name suggests, can convert a Boolean model to a system of ordinary differential equations. It then performs stochastic simulations to obtain SERNAC data. We incorporate these solutions and developed a comprehensive evaluation framework we call D-Line. In addition to the BooloD simulated data using literature curated Boolean models, we considered two other types of inputs, which I'll explain in just a bit. We can then take these inputs and run different algorithms and D-Line then performs parameter search if necessary and obtains inferred GRNs. We made all the algorithms available via their own Docker containers for easy reproducibility. We then evaluated the proposed GRM reconstructions by comparing them to the ground truth methods. We evaluated these methods under various measures such as area under the precision recall curve, early precision, which is the precision at a specific rank or a specific recall value, and also various stability and scalability measures. Next, I'll explain our inputs in a little more detail. The first type of input we considered were these simulated data sets from Google ODE using six synthetic networks. These networks have specific topologies that give rise to different cellular trajectories such as linear, cycle, bifurcating, etc. But what do I mean by that? For example, this is the network used to obtain bifurcating trajectory. The blue edges in the network are activating and the red edges are inhibiting. Here the mutual in inhibition between G4 and G6 ensures that if you simulate it as a Boolean model asynchronously, it has two steady states where either G4 and G7 will be turned on or G6 and G8 will be turned on, but not both. Which you also see in this 2D projection of Boolean simulations. Here, each point represents a single cell from a Boolean simulation. The cells in blue are sampled from early time points, and the cells in yellow are sampled from late simulation time points. As we walk along the simulation from blue to yellow, you can see a bifurcating trajectory. We were able to demonstrate similar behavior for all other methods using BooloD. Then for each of the six networks, we generated data sets with varying number of cells. Using these as inputs, we ran GRN inference algorithms and computed area under the precision recall curve or AUPRC. Here, I'm showing you the box plots of AUPRC values for each dataset algorithm combinations for the 10 datasets with 5,000 cells obtained for the linear network using BooloD. Here, the y-axis represents the AUPRC value and the x-axis represents the various algorithms tested. The dashed line represents the area under the precision recall curve of a random predictor. And as you can see, many of the algorithms perform quite well with the median AUPRC as high as 0.8. However, as the networks grow in complexity, the performance drops. Although a small subset of methods perform well compared to the others. We summarize these results for the six synthetic networks in the figure shown here. Here I'm showing the median AUPRC ratio obtained with each of the six synthetic networks. We defined AUPRC ratio to be the AUPRC divided by that of a random predictor. Here the brightest colors represent med high median AUPRC ratio, and a dark color represents a low median AUPRC ratio. The numbers represent the lowest and highest AUPRC ratios in each column. As you can see, sincerities achieved the highest median AUPRC ratio for four out of the six networks. Also, the top three performing methods shown here all require pseudo time ordered cells as input. But the key result here, as I mentioned earlier, 
is that the performance of all these methods decreases as the ground truth network's complexity increases. However, the nodes in these synthetic networks do not correspond to any real genes. So we considered a second type of input where we curated four published Boolean models that explore gene regulatory interactions underlying various developmental and tissue differentiation processes that are shown here. And we ensured that the BULOD simulations match the Boolean model steady states. And here we computed the pseudo time ordering of cells using slingshot to mimic a real serna seq preprocessing pipeline. Once again, we are looking at the median AUPRC ratios as before. The two things jump out of jump out when you see these results. First is that many algorithms now have AUPRC ratios close to that of a random predictor. We attribute this poor performance to the more complex topology of curated models. And many algorithms output indirect interactions, which we explain in more detail in our paper. Secondly, the methods that performed well for synthetic networks perform poorly for curated models. We attribute this to the fact that these methods were sensitive to zero time input. The key result here was that the top three performing methods, PIDC, GINI3, and GNN Boost 2, that perform best in curated models do not require zero time ordered cells as input. However, these methods, these models, were small with the largest Boolean model having only about 20 genes. So in order to scale the analysis to more genes and spark cell networks, we considered a third type of input, which were the data sets from experimental SCRNA-seq data sets obtained from three mouse and two human cell lines shown here. Now for the simulated data sets from BULODE, we knew the ground truth network. However, there are no widely accepted ground truth networks for experimental SCRNA seq data sets. But a common practice is to evaluate the accuracy of the resulting network by comparing its edges to an appropriate database of transcription factors and their targets. So, for the experimental SCRNA seq data sets, we use different types of ground truths, namely the cell type specific chip seq networks and the non cell type specific chip seq networks. In addition, we also considered string networks due to our observation that many GRN methods predict indirect interactions for Boolean models. In the interest of time, I'll summarize only the key results in the next few slides. Here, the brighter colors represent the, a relatively high median AUPRC or early precision, and a darker color represents a lower median AUPRC or early precision. For the experimental SCRNA seq datasets, we only considered the top five performing methods from synthetic or curated datasets and ignored the ones that require extensive parameter search. One of the key findings in this paper was that the methods that performed well on experimental datasets also performed well on simulated Boolean models, making BOOLOD with literature curated Boolean models a valuable tool for evaluating GRN influence methods. PIDC, GINI3, and GRN Boost 2 performed consistently well in terms of accuracy for both curated and SERNAC datasets. And the top three methods also performed relatively well in terms of stability and scalability, with PIDC and GRN Boost 2 taking under an hour for a dataset with up to 2,000 genes. I'm not going into the details of all these evaluations, but I welcome you to check out our paper which can be accessed here for more detail. To summarize, our main contribution was an evaluation framework B-line for benchmarking algorithms that infer GRNs from single cell gene expression data. B-line implements several measures for estimating and comparing the accuracy, stability, and efficiency of these algorithms. BULODE was a critical component of our analysis we developed BULODE after noting that the reported AUROC or precision at early recall values for GRN algorithms were often close to that of a random predictor. Therefore, we reasoned it would be valuable to the community to benchmark GRN algorithms by applying them to accurate simulations of Boolean models with predictable trajectories. 
Bhulodi is successful at this task and promises to be useful as an independent tool. Based on these results, we presented recommendations to end users of JRN inference algorithms. The source code for Beeline is available as a link shown here. But despite these advances, our evaluation shows that unsupervised JRN inference from single cell data remains a challenging problem. I just want to conclude my talk with a couple of ideas that we think are promising direction for future research. First, is to explore if we can take advantage of known interactions to learn JRNs from SCRNAC datasets. To this end, we propose a novel graph convolution neural network or GCN based autoencoders that perform denoising and imputation via network propagation to account for noise and dropouts in SCRNAC data. It also performs dimensionality reduction for a more efficient scalability to large SCRNAC datasets. Preliminary results show that our GCN-based autoencoders outperform existing methods for supervised GRN inference, such as support vector machine or a multi-layer perceptron, and even GRN Boost 2, which was one of the top performing methods from DLAN. I do not have the time to go into the details of the experimental setup, but our preprint with major findings from this analysis will be available in coming days. With that, I'd like to thank my co-authors for their contributions and NIH and NSF for funding. And I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.